morning and welcome to Grace Presbyterian Church. My name is Reese Leach. I'm an elder here and we are blessed to be able to worship our Lord Jesus Christ here on World Communion Sunday here in Lantana, Florida. We're blessed to have Reverend Randall Gill in our pulpit today and our helpers each and every week. Maylene and Doreen Sinaeus, Jim Leach, Chan Bahari, Lynn Orionez, and uh, Barbara Stanton, as well as our great musician, Brad Keller. Thank you so much for making these services possible. In starting World Communion Sunday, we're reminded how blessed we are to be a community of believers. And here in Lantana, certainly we have plenty of needs and plenty of desires, and we know that our Lord listens to them all. Please join me now as we open our worship service, the call to worship, based on Psalm 19. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise and the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Let's the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. And now Brad is going to play one of our favorites, hymn number 428, for those of you with a hymnal at home, In Christ There Is No East or West. Thank you, Brad. In Christ there is no east or west, in him no south or north, but one great fellowship of love throughout the whole wide earth. In him shall true hearts everywhere their high communion find. His service is the golden Close binding all mankind. Join hands and brothers of the faith, whatever your race may be. Who serves my father as a son is surely kin to me. In Christ now meet both east and west, in him meet south and north. All Christly souls are one in Him throughout the whole wide earth. Hello, I'm Doreen Sinius and I'll be reading the prayer of adoration. As we look at the heavens, the stars shine forth to herald your presence. The sun induces the warmth of your love. The vastness reminds us we cannot escape from your presence. You are above and beyond us, yet you choose to dwell with us. In Christ, you promise you'll be with us through whatever befalls us. You will straighten us whatever needs we may have. As your voice goes out through all the earth and your words to the end of the world, may your voices resound now as we give you all thanks and praise. Amen. Please join me now in prayers for the people. I can't thank you enough for sending in your prayer requests. Knowing that there are prayer requests make our collective prayer life just that much more meaningful and strong. Please join me now in prayer. We declare that we believe. We believe in the power of prayer. We delight in sharing our innermost thoughts with you, O oh God, knowing you care and will not think we are foolish or unworthy of your love and attention. We bear our souls to you, Jesus, knowing you have felt every emotion we do and know how to comfort us in our time of need and celebrate with us in our times of triumph. We are blessed in the family of grace to know you are near, you are ever present and ever powerful and all healing. And so today we ask for special healing prayers and comfort for our sister, Betty Ballaram, who's over in JFK Hospital, and for her loving family, Sam and Nigel, Nailene, <clears throat> and 
<clears throat> and Nichelle Miller. We ask that her recovery be speedy and that she can return home to her family soon. Please keep in your prayers the Beharry family and Kayla and Chan's uncle, Danny, and our aunt, Angela, knowing that your healing comfort can do miracles in their lives. We ask for prayers of healing for Mike and Keely O'Neill, Desmond and Cynthia Gray, Barry Ruthheiser, Raymond Ocasio, Keith Forbes, and Ellen Keller. Lift these people up in your healing touch, O Lord. And today is the day you, O Lord, have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We ask for prayers of healing for our President and First Lady and all of those with the coronavirus and celebration for those that have recovered from it and for being a calm, calming and steadfast influence on our world, O Lord, in this time of turmoil and teach us your way the way of kindness and truth and common sense. We offer prayers of guidance and nurturing and encouragement for those starting new lives and blessings for those like Terry and Jim and Emily and Jim, Maylene and Doreen and Reese. Bring us together like never before, O oh God, and give us courage to reach out to those in need let us be your messengers of grace and comfort. Amen. And now please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We'll now read our prayer of confession. You whose voice extends to the ends of the world have mercy upon us as we confess our sin. We live as enemies of the cross when we crave earthly things, glory in the weakness of others, yearn above all for satisfaction for ourselves, and serve only those gods who do what we want. Having attained the price of your mercy in Jesus, Help us to obey him as the source of new life. Amen. And through the grace and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, we know that our sins are forgiven. I will now sit, read our affirmation of faith, which is the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rising sun. 
son, oh Lord, have mercy on me. Oh God, our tithes and offerings come forward to you in abundance. Our well will be dug and it will be overflowing. Quite a metaphor for Grace Presbyterian Church. Now Brad is going to offer some inspirational music. Thank you, Brad. join me in the prayer of dedication. We rely on your promise, O oh God, that you will not forsake us. Our pledge to you is that we will be faithful. As we stand on the shoulders of those who have gone before, give us a vision of what commitment can mean. Accept the gifts that we place here before you as we in our day make our response. Let what we do be an example for others so that future believers learn of Christ and his way. Amen. We're very happy today to have Ricky Johnson with us to sing this song, Maker of the Heavens, a song that comes to us by way of LA, California. So we appreciate Ricky being with us today and, and just helping us to remember that the Lord is our creator, 
and that we are part of his creation to bring about the purposes of God in this world. Psalms chapter 19. God's glory in creation and the law. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and their firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard, yet their voice goes all through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun, which comes like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the earth, excuse me, heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hid from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart the commandment of the glory is clear, alighting the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinance of the Lord are true, and righteousness altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey, and dripping of the honeycomb. Moreover, 
by them is your servant born. In keeping them is great reward. But who can detect their errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back their servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Hear the word of God as it is written in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, beginning with verse 33. Jesus said, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to the tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another one, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated him in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them saying, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, this is the heir, come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And this was the Lord's doing. And it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on the stone will be broken to pieces and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was talking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. Here ends the reading of our scripture lesson, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The singer-songwriter Mariah Carey has just written a book that's going to be coming out very soon. And the book is The Meaning of Mariah Carey. And in this book, Mariah talks about rejection. And all of us have experienced rejection at some point in our life. And the book goes into very deep feelings. Mariah went through a lot of painful times as a child with abusive relationships in her family, with parents, with a brother and sister. She felt rejection. She felt rejection from her classmates when she was in school. She was always a little different to them because she had a black father and a white mother and sometimes the children made fun of her and she faced racial discrimination. It was very painful for her. When she was 19, she was already very talented as a singer But she was hurting because she didn't have a record contract. She was hopeful for the future, hoping that something would happen. And it finally did. 
and she became one of the most famous singers of all time. But still, her family was trying to take advantage of her financially, even when she was successful. And she suffered from a very unhappy and abusive marriage. Again, there was more reject rejection. Her story is a reminder that even though we may have success in life, there can still be some deep scars of rejection. And today in this scripture passage, Jesus reminds us about the rejection that he's going to be suffering as he makes his way to Jerusalem and the cross. Jesus reminds us that there will be suffering. There was a middle school teacher who was telling her Sunday school students about a man in ancient times who was in the temple and the man realized his need for God and how he was sinful and he said Lord have mercy on me a sinner and how the Pharisees saw this man and said look at him thank God we are not like him the Sunday school told that Sunday school teacher told that story and then said children let's gather around and hold hands and let's pray and the prayer was Lord we thank you that we're not like that mean Pharisee but you know Jesus would say that we've all fallen short and there are times when sometimes we've all been like that Pharisee and it appears here in this parable here were people that were very religious that they had been entrusted with a vineyard but what were they doing with it and so Jesus tells this story today he tells this parable about tenants in the vineyard and how the owner wanted to collect his produce. And scholars have noted that this is the only parable that Jesus tells where he interjects himself, where it's very clear that Jesus is in this story. So in today's scripture, we see the landowner who would be God, plants a vineyard, which would be Israel. And he puts up a fence, the Torah, or the law, designed to protect him. The field is then leased to other tenants who are charged with watching over the vineyard. They are to harvest the fruit. This is what they are to do. They are to hold portions of the yield for the landowner. God's intention was that the people of Israel were to be the light of the world, that they would be the light for other nations of the world. But Jesus retells the story with a twist. The landowner God sends his prophets but the prophets are persecuted. And then the landowner, God, sends his son, who is our Lord Jesus Christ. Will they repent? Will they re respect the Lord Jesus? But no, they will kill him and put him on a cross to suffer and die. God's kingdom, his vineyard will be transformed and given to those who produce the fruits of the kingdom.
course, the Pharisees, when they hear this parable, are outraged. But this is also a parable that speaks to us. Because sometimes we forget that we, too, can be like the Pharisees. At Princeton Seminary, I had the opportunity to hear Ralph David Abernathy, the pastor and the great friend of Martin Luther King Jr. preach. And he was always the one who had the great sense of humor and would tell humorous stories. And he told this story about a farmer who took two roosters to a cockfight. And he put the two roosters in a box in the back of his pickup truck and drove to his destination. And when he got there, he opened up the box and he looked in and he couldn't believe it. Inside the box, there was just blood and feathers. And he said, Golly, he said, these two roosters forgot that they were on the same team. That's the way it is for us in life. Sometimes we forget that we're on the same team, that we are working together as the church to bring about God's kingdom. That Sometimes we can be like the Pharisees. We can become so critical that we forget what we were called to do. And so today this parable reminds us that as the church on this World Communion Sunday, that we have been called together to labor in God's vineyard. And to remember that someday we will be accountable and that the Lord will say to us, what have you done with what I have entrusted to you? What have you done with my vineyard? It's my prayer that we might all be faithful and worthy servants of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray together. Lord, we thank you that on this World Communion Sunday that we're joining with millions of Christians around the world, and we face many different issues. And we pray, Lord, that we might show respect and love and justice to all people, and that we might be faithful in our witness. Lord, as we read today's scriptures, we are conscious of the failure of your people again and again. We have failed to live up to your intention. This was to be a garden you made, and it was good. Every age has tried to turn it into a jungle. Help us, Lord, to not only see the mistakes of those in other days, but our own feeling, failures as well, and our own feelings that have let you down. Convict us of those things that we ought to do and not to do. Help us when we fail. We are amazed as we read your words of your infinite patience and your loving kindness. Help us, Lord, today to move forward and to show your love to all people. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Today on this World Communion, millions of Christians will be gathering together. We will be in our homes, most of us, but we are joined together by the Holy Spirit through our faith and our devotion to the Lord. The scripture reminds us that people will come from the north and the south, 
east and west to come and worship and glorify our Lord Jesus Christ. We remember that the Lord said that he would be with us always in the Gospel of Matthew. The Lord will not forsake us even during the most difficult times in life. The Lord promises to be with us. And that is the hope that we have on this World Communion Sunday, that we are joined together with other disciples who trust and love the Lord like we do. Our Lord Jesus Christ invites all those who place their faith in him to come and to partake at this table. If you confess your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are welcome to come and to be with us in spirit. And now, as a minister of our Lord Jesus Christ, I set apart these elements by prayer and thanksgiving for the holy use for which he has appointed them. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that at this moment in history that you were with us, just as you were with the disciples in ancient times. We thank you, Lord, that you promised to forgive our sins. And so we take a moment to repent of our sins. We ask for your forgiveness. We know that there are things that we have done in life that have not been pleasing to you. That there are things that we have said that have disappointed you. Lord, forgive us and help us to lead lives that truly are a testimony to what we believe. Lives that honor you. Now, Lord, we pray that you would join us together at this moment, that you would bring us close to you and close to one another. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. On the night our Lord was betrayed, he took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. the same manner. Our Savior took the cup and after he blessed it, he gave it to his disciples saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for the forgiveness of your sins. Whenever you drink of it, remember me. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. I'm going to now ask for those who are here to come forward to receive communion and also for you to receive communion at home. Body 
body of Christ broken for you. Jesus said, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Cut off from me, you cannot do anything. the blood of Christ shed for the forgiveness of our sins. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that on this World Communion Sunday, that we could join together here and at home and around the world with other believers. And we pray, Lord, that we might truly be fruitful, that we truly might help your world to bloom, that we might help to create a beautiful garden that you would be pleased with. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Christ go with you all. Amen.
Watching from 